Good evening. Thanks for joining me this Wednesday. I'm Ruth Ho, and these are tonight's top stories. Missing three-year-old girl in Langkawi found dead today. That the Sri Nazri Aziz to skip the and Supreme Council meeting. And suicide attack killed at least 16 in eastern Afghanistan. We begin tonight's bulletin with this story. A three-year-old girl reported missing at the end of last month was found dead today and is believed to have been murdered. Police found the decomposed body of Nur Aisha Aliya Abdullah at 11.30 this morning in the jungle in Gunung Raya, Langkawi after they were led to the spot by a man suspected to have been involved in the girl's disappearance. Nur Aisha Aliyah was reported to have gone missing while in the custody of a married couple who initially disappeared. Police launched a search for a 37-year-old man and his 40-year-old wife and yesterday picked up the married couple in Ampang, Slango. After being interrogated, the male suspect led the police to the jungle in Gunung Raya where they found Nur Aisha Aliyah's remains. The suspect claimed the girl died after an epilepsy attack on February 16th. He then brought her remains to Gunung Raya in a luggage bag before dumping the body in a ravine. Last Sunday, Nur Aisha Aliyah's mother, an Indonesian, lodged a police report claiming that her three-year-old daughter went missing for the male suspect's care, who also happens to be her boyfriend. The woman claimed that her boyfriend told her the child had been handed over to a third party. Now, four children were among 10 members of a drug trafficking syndicate arrested in Johor Bahru early this morning. Police also seized an assortment of drugs, including ganja, heroin and shabu, worth over 11,000 ringgit in a raid at two houses in Taman Pelangi, Indah. <laughs> Deputy Johor Police Chief Datuk Muhammad Kamaruddin Muhammad Din said police are investigating the involvement of the four children aged between 6 and 12 in the syndicate. Initial investigations showed one of the children is related to a male suspect. Saya percaya bahawa kanak-kanak itu sebab kita buat sebuah di rumah kan? dan uh, kanak-kanak itu berada di rumah. Walaupun mana pun kita tidak boleh menolak andaian yang berkenaan lah. Kita akan siasat uh, tentang pelibatan kanak-kanak ini uh, sebab mereka ini terlibat secara langsung ataupun memang kebetulan mereka ini berada di rumah masa kita buat tangkapan. During the raid, police arrested three men and three women aged between 19 and 34. They also recovered a Browning pistol together with 60 bullets. Eight vehicles and 50,000 ringgit cash were also seized from the suspects. The adults were remanded for six days to assist the investigations, while the four children were released on police bond. Two individuals believed to be friends of an Irish man who was murdered over the weekend have been remanded to assist in police investigations into the case. Senior Assistant Registrar Musa Mara Azmi allowed a three-day remand order for the two until Friday. The duo, a 37-year-old woman and a 43-year-old man, were brought to the Georgetown Magistrates Court this morning for a remand order. It is believed that the man was one of the three men who were seen entering the condominium with the victim. Brian Patrick O'Reilly last Friday night. O'Reilly was found covered in blood in a master bedroom of his condominium unit in MBF Tower. His hands were bound by shoelaces and his feet by a piece of cloth. The 50-year-old's body was found with slash wounds on his neck, stab wounds on his abdomen and was believed to have been hit with a walk. A cryptic note was found near the victim's body which says, I respected the police and still do but justice sometimes has to be gained. I hate you mafia-killing scammers. I love my girl. It is believed that the primary suspect of the case, a Caucasian man who has since gone into hiding, was the one who wrote the note and that the police are still on the hunt for him. 
Meanwhile, eight prison officers and an Indonesian woman who is an illegal taxi driver are being remanded for six days to assist in the investigation into receiving bribes amounting to 120,000 ringgit. The remand order was issued by Georgetown Court's assistant registrar, Muna Maria Azmi, following an application by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC. All the officers are being investigated under the Section 17A of the MACC Act. Yesterday, the prison officers aged 25 and 44 were arrested by the MACC in Penang, Kedah and Pahang for allegedly receiving the bribes from the 45-year-old woman driver. She was said to offer the bribes as an inducement for the prison officers not to take action against her for bringing a prohibited item into the prison. The investigation into items related to one Malaysia Development Berhad 1MDB case must be completed on or before May 16th. Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Muhammad Fuzi Harun said police only had until the date to hold on to the items. Kerana dia ada tempoh-tempoh tertentu yang mana kita kena patuh dan kita akan apa ni, lengkapkan apa ni tempo sebelum tempo yang uh, luput ni uh, kalau saya tak silap 16 Mei kalau saya tak silap is the last date uh, berkaitan dengan barang-barang yang dirampas ni bulan Mei tu apa jadi tak kita ada proses uh, proses tertentu yang mana apa ni tindakan-tindakan melalui proses mahkamah akan akan kita cadangkan in May last year, police seized a number of items and documents from an apartment believed to be owned by Dr. Sri Najib Tun Razak at the Pavilion residence in Kuala Lumpur. It was later revealed that the total value of the items was between 900 million and 1.1 billion ringgit. On efforts to locate businessman Lo Teik Jo or Jo Lo, Tan Sri Mohamed Fuzi said the police are still working with international counterparts over the matter, including from China. Meanwhile, police believe Elvin Chow Moon Fai, the man wanted for allegedly insulting Prophet Muhammad, is still in a Klang Valley. Tan Sri Muhammad Fuzi said the police were working closely with the Malaysian Com Communication and Multimedia Commission MCMC to locate the 43-year-old suspect. Zakat yang saya tahu bagi ini belum dilaporkan. Kita masih mengesan uh, penama tersebut. Kita percayai dia berada di sekitar Lembah Klang. Sebenarnya tugas untuk apa ni Facebook dan sebagainya lebih kepada tanggungjawab SKMM tapi pihak kita menjalankan sesatan jadi kita bekerja sama kita perlu bekerja sama sebab kita pun apa ni jalan kesesatan secara bersama di bawah section 233 SKMM tu dan juga 298A kanun kesesatan Yesterday, police arrested three suspects aged between 22 and 52 in Labuan Sarawak, Selangor and Kuala Lumpur on suspicion of insulting Islam as well as Prophet Muhammad via social media. To date, a total of 929 police reports were lodged against the suspects nationwide and 16 investigation papers have been opened. Tan Sri Muhammad Fuzi also urged the public to be wary of making false and malicious statements online as such acts may jeopardize public order and affect the country's national unity. In other news, the Rantau by-election will be held on April 13th with nomination on March 30th and early voting on April 9th. Election Commission EC Chairman Asar Harun said there will be 14 days of campaigning starting from nomination day. Untuk memudahkan proses penamaan calon, saya mengesa kepada bakal-bakal calon yang ingin bertanding pada PRK N27 Rantau agar mengisi dan membuat semakan awal pengisian borang tersebut dengan pihak pejabat pegawai pengurus atau pejabat pilihan raya negeri sembilan sebelum hari penamaan calon. Proses semakan awal ini boleh dibuat mulai 25 Mac 2019. Selain itu, Bakar-bakar calon juga adalah dinasihati untuk membuat pembayaran deposit lebih awal. As of February 25th, there are a total of 20,926 voters in Rantau, 
a Malay majority constituency. They compromised 20,804 normal votes, 118 early voters and four who are overseas. The EC will deploy four enforcement teams to monitor activities during the campaign period. They compromise of representatives from the police and local authorities as well as EC officials. The Rantau by-election was triggered by the election court's decision last November to allow PKR President Datuk Strum Sina Sami's uh, petition my apologies, for fresh polls. The multiracial spirit embraced by Barisan National BN has faded. No thanks to Amno Pass official collaboration announced yesterday. Its Secretary General, Dr. Sri Muhammad Nazri Aziz, said the partnership between the two once sworn enemies will give priority to Islam and the Malay rights, while those of the minorities will be sidelined. I think uh, BN, in its spirit of Multilateralism has ended actually. with the union of uh, BN and PAS. So this issue is actually academic. Yeah? It has been decided. The moment when uh, you know whatever people say, lah, people will say uh, I'm no, or, you know, shouldn't know that. Whatever people say, this union announcement of the union actually ended the Barca National. The spirit that we knew in 1969. In a press conference today, the Padang Rangas MP said the Amno Pass partnership may also result in a dissolution of BN, the motion for which is expected to be proposed by MCA and MIC in the Supreme Council meeting scheduled this Friday. Meanwhile, Dr. Sri Nazri said he will not voluntarily resign as BN Secretary General and will leave the matter to the Supreme Council. He also confirmed his planned absence from the upcoming Friday meeting after MCA and MIC threatened to not attend the gathering if he was not present and if he was present. The results for the 2018 Sigil Pelajaran Malaysia SPM examination will be released on March 14th. Last year, a total of 421,706 candidates registered to sit for the SPM. The Education Ministry, in a statement, said students can obtain the results from their respective schools after 10 a.m. Meanwhile, private candidates will receive theirs through post or by contacting the respective state education department where they registered. Candidates can also check the results by a short messaging system by typing my-sms and sending it to 15888. The service will be available from 10 a.m. on March 14th to 6 uh, to 6 p.m. on March 20th. Students can also check via the examination board website listed on the screen. When we come back, driver's attempt to overtake failed, causing terrifying accident. Details next. Thanks for staying with us. Now let's hop on to our daily segment Clickbait where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. From speeding to not taking the same amount of care and attention, there are no end of factors that can seriously increase our risk of potentially fatal car crash. Just like this case when a Perudua Maivi attempted to overtake a car and speed at the same time, the results are lethal. A video taken by a witness dashboard camera went viral, accumulating over 200,000 views and 1,900 shares on Facebook. Here's the story. The accident occurred around 8 p.m. on March 2nd in Kinrara Highway towards Subang Jaya. In the 33 seconds video, a Proton Iswara and a red Proto of Myvi can be seen overtaking the car. A white Myvi, which was tailing the red Myvi, 
also attempted to overtake the car. However, he failed to control his car and crashed into two other cars on the left lane. Following this, many took to social media, pinpointing how reckless the white Myvi in driving, which has caused fertility towards other innocent drivers. Hopefully this serves as a reminder to people out there that such incidents can be avoided. Even though modern cars' braking systems are phenomenal, but we have to know that humans' reaction and reflexes are not altered as fast as the car. Now, when it comes to longevity, most people think that the key to holding the secret is to have a healthy lifestyle as well as a balanced diet. However, this is indeed contradicting as a 98-year-old woman in central China had become a figure of public interest due to her addiction for unhealthy food. Her videos were posted on Chinese social media platform TikTok and has since garnered millions of views at the same time, giving her a total of 416,000 followers. Here are the details. The old lady's granddaughter Chai took to social media to share her grandmother's weird dietary preferences since August, which has recently became a hot topic on another Chinese social media platform called Weibo. Following the post, her grandmother has even gained a nickname of Grandma Foodie, with many praising her for enjoying life despite her old age. However, what's more shocking to the public is that the popular grandma who enjoys greasy, spicy food and basically any thing that seems unhealthy was once a Chinese medical practitioner in her youthful times. The viral video has also raised netizens' concern regarding the grandmother's unhealthy diet. What more at such an old age? Now updated as of 7pm, here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Now, national car maker Proton Holdings Berhad sales continued to gain traction with a total of 5,283 vehicles sold in February this year, an increase of 37% from a year earlier. In a statement today, it said the sales figures saw the company's market share expand by over 3% to some 12.7% compared with the corresponding period in 2018. Over a year-on-year -year basis, Proton said its overall sales growth was higher than all its rivals despite the short sale period in February. The company also recorded a commendable sales growth of 42% for the first two months of this year. Meanwhile, the recently launched Proton X70 remains the best-selling SUV in the country, with 2,823 units sold last month. Proton has received over 20,000 bookings for the SUV since it was unveiled in December last year. Now, sovereign wealth fund Kazana National Berhad, which suffered a 6.3 billion ringgit pre-tax loss in 2018, is on track to return to the black this year, backed by its plans to divest its non-core assets. Economic expert Datuk Dr. Nasri Khan Abdam Khan said Kazana's losses were mainly due to the volatile stock market during the period which heavily impacted the shareholding companies such as CIMB Group Holdings Berhad, Axiata Group Berhad and Telecom Malaysia Berhad. Kita melihat ini adalah sebagai satu uh, proses pembersihan ataupun kitchen cleaning yang dilakukan oleh uh, Kazana, pengurusan baru Kazana untuk memastikan going forward uh, kita boleh ada clean balance sheet. Kita kena faham kerugian ini berlaku uh, adalah disebabkan faktor-faktor yang di luar kawalan kita. Right? Uh, pertama sekali kita kena understand the whole world. Right? Market is uncertain. Right? Dan sebenarnya bukan sahaja khazanah yang lost. In fact, the biggest sovereign wealth fund 
uh, which is in Norway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, government pension fund in Norway. They also lost 57 US dollar, right? Uh, 57 billion US dollar, uh, which they lost last year. Datuk Nazri Khan also commanded Kazana's newly introduced investment strategy involving its commercial and strategic funds. For the record, Kazana is among 15 biggest sovereign wealth funds in the world. This reflects the firm's solid foundation amid a challenging environment in the global investment sphere. Datuk Nazri Khan said it is, it is imperative for Kazana to be able to achieve favourable returns in a bid to support various government initiatives. He also emphasised the importance of professional and transparent asset management within Kazana to ensure a fruitful recovery, recovery plan. Coming up, death toll in Indonesia mine collapse rises to 16. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're back with foreign news. In Afghanistan, at least 16 employees were killed over a suicide attack on a construction comp company's office, while nine others were reportedly injured in the eastern of the wartime country. The deadly attack, which occurred on Wednesday morning, began after two suicide bombers set off their explosives outside the office before gunmen opened fire. Following this, five attackers, including two bombers and three gunmen, have been killed by security forces. So far, no group has claimed responsibility for the strike, despite Daesh and Taliban are active in the province. The bombings came as U.S. and Taliban negotiations continue to hold ongoing peace talks in Qatar, aimed at ending the nearly 18-year conflict. 